set to go. I'm going to call the meeting of the BOHS number six board Monday, May 21, 2012, to order at 7, 7 p.m., the correct time. Um, we'll, we have some guests and a presenter here tonight, so we'll move the schedule around a little bit to accommodate that, Mr. Braden. And uh, uh, well, I would like to uh, start with a, well, to do the clerk report first. We'll take care of that, and then we'll go into recognition of groups and visitors, in which case we will hear from you about the police trip. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, clerk's report. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of May 7th, which were circulated last Some week, I believe? Ricky, a second? I'll second. Okay. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections? If not, is there a motion to accept the minutes as written? We've got the motion. We've got the motion. Oh. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I double vote, Ruth. Sorry. I'll, I'll have to abstain because I wasn't there. Okay. Any other abstentions or negatives? Okay. Uh, communications. The uh, only thing that I have that I guess fits under that is uh, a communication by way of the reformer this morning, I believe, or Saturday, I guess it was Saturday, uh, Robert Page uh, questioning the uh, uh, lack of dugouts for the girls uh, <coughs> softball uh, at Sawyer Field. And, uh, you know, we have plans in, in, in effect to make some nice improvements there. Uh, the question was why wasn't it put in originally? Well, that, that I, can, I can respond to. Uh, and I, I think my response will be that uh, we always continue to look for ways to improve the field. I'll outline briefly so the public can see it in the press. Uh, you know, the basics of what the project is that we're working on. And, uh, uh, respond accordingly and that's the communications I have does anybody have anything else okay that's it for the clerk's report okay we have a presentation tonight by Dan Braden report on the police <coughs> trip thanks very much for having me I'm sorry we couldn't get any students to come present tonight. They presented to the um, about a third of the student body on diversity day a couple of weeks ago. And so they put together a slideshow with a lot of uh, pictures of their trip, which I just kind of have to play up here if you don't mind. <coughs> and while it plays, I'll just tell you a few things about it. This trip was a couple years in the planning with your help and support. <coughs> so these are pictures <coughs> from students. We had 16 students go on the trip. This was the first time we had this trip, the first science trip um, from the science department, in my knowledge. Maybe Mr. Parent would know one way back when. But, um, and so we were copying the itinerary. The guide who was just shown there was the guide that Keene High School has used on a very similar trip for the last 25 years with great success. Uh, I myself went on that trip as a junior in high school way back when, and it really, for me, sparked my interest in science and a real passion for environmental conservation and getting involved with a lot of world issues, which led to my career over the next decade or so. I was really pleased with how it went. Um, we had, as I said, 16 kids, um, and out of those I've heard many of them use the term life-changing to describe the experience. I made them work really hard uh, before the trip and during, so what you'll see here will look like some touristy shots, certainly. Um, like they took a picture of every hammock they encountered, I think, but I didn't let them sit in those hammocks for very long whatsoever. Um, but it, it did include some cultural aspects, certainly. Prior to the trip, they had to become quite conversant in the history <coughs> of this country, um, its colonial history, its uh, freedom from colonialism, yes, and how, how it's, um, yeah, if you have any questions, please interrupt me. Um, this is a night tour at the Belize Zoo, um, which is a, the largest environmental conservation force in Belize. 
um, started by a woman from Iowa about 25 years ago. And all the animals there are Belizean only, and they're either uh, problem animals, um, which have been, would otherwise have been shot by farmers, or else injured animals that were basically left on their doorstep for rehabilitation. Um, so in addition to learning the history of Belize and why it has the highest percentage of preserved land of any country in, on Earth, um, they had to you know, learn you know, what sort of opportunities for development Belize has at its disposal, how it's basically green tourism uh, infrastructure, which drew us down there, which draws lots of people down there, and offers it a hopefully sustainable model and a bit of a uh, model for its neighboring countries. So there's about 10 minutes of photos, but I'll tell you uh, that we don't have to see all of them. But the kids that we took down were 16 um, students, 14 of, or sorry, 12 of those are seniors, uh, graduating seniors, which is part <coughs> of their lives are too busy to be here tonight, uh, they felt. Um, but some of them have, have real interest in science, and for some this was a real eye-opener in terms of things that might be real career opportunities for them. Um, Definitely some of them, and I told them this, displayed an ability to become academic scientists if they want to. Their, their observations on everything they saw down there were just so rich and so detailed. And they would spring out of bed at 5 a.m. to go on every bird walk that we offered. And they would be up late at night, uh, not playing with the tarantulas, but exploring the tarantulas in a, in a safe way. Um, for others, they were really taken you know, by the... Um, by the tour guide aspect of it, and you know, would love to go and help conserve the animals down there, help conserve the environment down there. But for all of them, I really wanted them to understand the politics of the country, the history of the country, and then we spent a lot of time looking in depth at the terrestrial ecology, and also, as we'll get to in a few minutes here, the aquatic ecology. The coral reefs there are pretty spectacular in their own right. Um, so we're delving into depth in all three of those aspects. So I designed a curriculum, I, I planned it out to meet uh, you know, educational requirements for 9 through 12 science uh, that address some gaps that we have in the science department and for coming to three two-hour lectures ahead of time for reading a book ahead of time and multiple hours of homework ahead of time for all their work on the course which definitely involved quite a bit of reading and discussing even while we were in the field um, every student earned two credits of elective science credits which appears on the transcripts as uh, tropical ecology of Belize that's Mr. Malin. We've had three chaperones, um, myself, and then Ms. Hood, who's a consummate professional and the new uh, science department chair, and Mr. Malin as well. So we fortunately, knock on wood, had good luck health-wise. We had just a couple minor sunburns, a couple of bumps and bruises, but nothing bad at all. Um, <coughs> everyone returned you know, healthy and happy and really eager to tell their friends to go on this, to do this. Um, Right now, we're planning to offer it again in 2014 with the approval of the board. As I said, this was the first time, and we'd love to do it again. They, as I said, so they didn't take many pictures of when they were slaving away doing academic work, but I do promise that that happened. In a moment, there'll be one of our, our classrooms, so to speak, on this uh, coral reef atoll where we were for three days, um, which was basically just, oh, we'll never get there. Uh, but one of those cabanas had a lot of chairs, and so that was our classroom, so to speak. It was, uh, there we go. Yep, they spent a lot of hours there. So, any questions I can answer? This was the first time for the UHS to do this? Yep, it was. And, uh, or any other students? You said Keen has been doing it. Is, that yep. been, is this something that we're behind getting uh, involved in? <laughs> or is this a... Hi, Cliff Learn over there is a um, longtime faculty member is now at Keene State College who's been doing it since the late 80s. Uh, so, uh, you know, I can speak from experience that the Keene High program has, you know, really sparked a lot of interest for a lot of people, <laughs> myself included. Um, and so I was grateful to be able to offer it, offer it to students here as well. The first school day after they returned, I think I had five of the students come up to me outside the building before school starts to tell me how great the trip was, um, how much they learned, and um, how many birds Mr. Malin looked at. I mean, they were, it was amazing. And they were, they were bubbling with enthusiasm, you know, tired from the trip, but really excited about what everything they had done. 
So was there anything after the trip was over in, in terms of meetings or, or, or papers or summaries? Or um, no, we had a culminating discussion actually at the airport uh, while, while on a layover, just talking about everything that we had done in context, returning all the way back to the history of Belize and its, its development until now and potentially in the future. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, a culminating paper um, wouldn't be a bad thing at all, I think, for, for next time. Right now, it, right now they've escaped, but um, yeah, they gave a presentation, as I said, on Diversity Day, um, a 50-minute presentation to a couple hundred students at a time, so that was kind of culminating. Oh, yeah. Um, but I do think that's a good idea for next time. So, I mean, thanks again very much for supporting it from the start and right through, and I'm glad it went as well as it did, and again, I guess I'll need to return to ask to be able to start already. start with finance. Okay, finance met on May 9th at 7 a.m. and we approved warrant numbers 1202, 1204, 1206, 1207-89, <coughs> and 1212-1215. For a total of seven hundred and twenty-three thousand seven hundred and seventy-two dollars and seventy-nine cents, and I notice it's not in the agenda, but we also approved payrolls of April 6th in the amount of $472,406.63 and April 20 in the amount of $478,044. On the 20th, some more information on that uh, on Wednesday. Is that the next meeting is Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at 7 a.m.? Wednesday, the 23rd of May at 7 in the morning. I think there was an email concerning <laughs> the, the uh, press box also. Was it, it was around that I received yesterday. Well, we, we did discuss that. Yeah, we did discuss that a little bit, and we'll talk about that a little bit <coughs> more here tonight probably. In, Applying with the bleacher project, if there's questions. <coughs> okay, is that it for finance? Okay, let's see. Planning and policy. Um, has not met since our last meeting, but there's second readings coming up later. The agenda. Yeah, okay. Uh, teacher curriculum committee. Um, TCC met this evening, practice prior to this meeting. 
um, and we went over um, open positions at the high school level, um, where things are with search committees and that process for those positions, and then we also spent a bunch of time talking about 1% um, fund requests that have come in so far and what the deadline is, and we'll be seeing a lot of those at our next meeting, so we'll be <coughs> approving a lot of those one percent later, but we went through a lot of those tonight. Okay. Any questions on that? Ricky? Okay, BAMS committee. Um, BAMS committee has not met since our last meeting, and our new meeting time will actually be right between the planning and policy meeting and the regular meeting on June 4th. So we'll be meeting at 6.30 in this room um, on the 4th of June. Okay. WRCC, Career Center committee. Uh, not met since the last one, right? No, we have not met. Okay. Any, uh, anything else? For consent agenda. If not, is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? I move to accept the consent agenda. Second. And Ricky second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Okay. We'll move on to administrative reports. And uh, uh, okay, I thought we would oh we do that under the DHS part of the administrative. Yeah, I mean I don't see any is there doesn't it's, look like it's listed in the it's not well it's, it's not um as a separate item but you <coughs> can get an update on it. No, it doesn't have to stay. right right yeah i was just gonna I, I wanted to handle one other uh administrative report first because we're all bubbling with excitement <coughs> uh and uh I, it was in the paper today and i guess everybody knows now that we have amongst us uh the vermont superintendent of the year As I said to the group that presented this to me uh, Thursday night, I really accept this on behalf of the whole district and the communities that we, we work in. Um, we have a great administrative staff, uh, outstanding teachers, um, very supportive board members and communities, and uh, it's really a pleasure to work here. And so um, it's, it's nice that they acknowledge, <coughs> I, I accept this in acknowledging our, our whole district. So I really thank you all for uh, having me work here. Okay, I uh, want to uh, move on to BOHS administration because we have uh, Robert Clark here uh, and we can get an update on the Bleacher Project, which is our major money project that's going on right now. Did you have comments to... No, I think I'll let Robert start first. Okay, can I set the, can I set the background a little bit? Oh, I've got plenty of time. Time wise. I just, uh, as you know, this is a... This is a project that uh, completion date is scheduled for September 7th. I think it's time sensitive. It right? is it's time sensitive, sensitive. yes. Yeah, so we need to have it done by then. And uh, we've, we've been moving right along, and I'll let Robert fill you in, but uh, we need to move relatively quickly in terms of uh, selecting a, a contractor. So therefore, the urgency of discussing it tonight, and uh, I'll let you go ahead and Updates. Some of the information Corey just went on to get, it was missing on the summary of the bids. Very important piece of the information that needs to be presented tonight. So he ran back to his office to go get that. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'll talk about the project itself. Um, thankfully for us, we have a very talented maintenance staff. And the Career Center volunteered their equipment to help us. And between the two of them, we were able to take down the old set of bleachers in-house and prepare the, the groundwork for the new set of bleachers. And that saved a tremendous amount of time. It also saved the school a lot of money by doing it in-house, and they did a great job. We actually recaptured, and this is just a portion of it, almost $1,900 in just scrapping the metal. So. 
Um, we didn't make money, but, but we didn't spend that much money either. Uh, so it was very cost effective. And that part went along well. There's a few little wrinkles along the way in the foundation work that we came to. We had the borings done, but it's nothing that we can't overcome. You're always going to find little surprises here and there. That's the nature of the beast. But overall, the project is right on schedule. It is a tight timeline, but we are making all the deadlines. And that's why we spec'd it the way we did for Friday night. We met down at the <coughs> office at 4 o'clock did the bid openings. We really pushed the vendors hot to come through and we only gave them a very short time uh, to meet our timeline. And they all know that they have a timeline of September 7th. And that's, that's really tight. That's, everything has to go perfect to meet that date. I believe 100 days from Wednesday is be September 1st so and, and the original plan was 90 to 120 days from uh, completion so um, time is of the essence so you will have some more for some reason the bids are back and we we, we have recommendations for uh, a vendor okay would you like to we'll hold up then and yes. go back to Steve for a period of time so the recommendations arrive yes So um, when I pass it around, it's our latest issue of the DHS newsletter. A couple of things in there I'd like to highlight once everybody has one. Um, but before we get to that, um, a week ago on, on the 14th, uh, I'm very proud to say that BOHS was represented incredibly well on WCAX. WCAX is doing a program uh, all last week called High School Homework. And they selected five high schools, and we are one of them to do a student production of a videography production, which they then aired on WCAX and then discussed with the cast. Um, we're lucky to have Ethan here, who was one of the main uh, people involved in that project. Their work was professional, it was impeccable, and uh, they did a great job discussing it with the anchor afterwards. What I'd like to do is send um, each of the board members the link that would, would show you that video, and it's going to be on the website probably tomorrow morning, but I didn't want to send it unsolicited, but I, with your permission, I'll send it to you. Um, it's an incredible piece, and if you look at the work that we did, uh, we meeting day, um, if you look at the work they did, their presentation looks professional. It, it's seamless. The camera work, the audio work is just uh, at a level that I've never seen before in high school. Congratulations to you and everybody else. We have two of them. So on the 24th, we'll have our annual Pops concert um, in, the, in the BUHS Auditorium. And as usual, Steve Rice and Patty Meyer have put together a program that mixes the contemporary and the traditional. Um, that will be something um, as it always is. The Music Department Awards will be June 7th at 6.30 in the multi-purpose room. We, a mere two days ago, had our prom. I'm happy to report that um, hemlines were down and the music, was, the music was up, it was way up. Uh, it was held at the Putney Inn. And uh, no, the entity was sharing the convention center with your group. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in the middle of the prom, these two people came in and asked for a room. And I said, well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and then they realized I didn't work there. Uh, but the prom was great. Uh, no incidents to report other than people had a great time. Um, Putney Inn was a wonderful place to have it. The 2012 yearbook is out. And I don't have my copy with me. I wish I did. Um, this year, the yearbook was dedicated to Jim Day. Um, and so that was a great honor. I, I spoke with Mr. Day on the phone to let him know. And we're going to work out a time with the yearbook staff to present him with this copy. But um, the dedication is very touching. And um, there's even a picture of him writing a yak in China. Um, we're getting close to the end of the year. And as we get closer and closer, um, 
it's time for us to celebrate our seniors, their four-year accomplishments, and then to watch them graduate and go out into the world. As you know, graduation is June 15th. I'll remind you about that again, I'm sure. Um, prior to that, on Sunday the 10th, our baccalaureate service will be at 7 o'clock in the BAMS multipurpose room. That is a great event. Um, generally, students come in, they sing, they dance, they give speeches. Uh, we hope to have some speakers there. And it's just a wonderful celebration of the, of the whole four years of their time here. So if you can make that, um, it's, a, it's a really special ceremony. Our final exams will be Tuesday and Wednesday. And then, as I said before, graduation will be Friday on Natowich Field at 6.30. And um, I think it will be the last graduation. If it's outside, it will be the last graduation ceremony that faces that way. In future years, it will be turned around. So it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, I believe that's it. I think Corey's is here. So thank yes, you. Yes, Corey Frizee, hi, I'm Stevens and Associates. Thank you for your patience. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so we opened the bids for the new grandstand project um, Friday. And uh, I didn't bring enough copies for everybody, it doesn't look like, but uh, we, can, we can share them. Um, I was going to start by passing out the summary of the bids. Let's wait on those actually for. <coughs> we'll just give every two people yeah. one copy. That's okay. We had what we would refer to as four responsive <coughs> bidders. Um, we were working with five manufacturers and got four bids. So that was good. Um, just a little bit of background. We put a bid package together. Robert had done a bunch of research. Um, for grandstands such as this, the, they are typically prefabricated by manufacturers. There's seven of them in the Northeast region. Um, so we reached out to, like I said, five of them, gathered information. Um, they're all a little bit unique. So it created a, a challenge in a way because they all want to put their own little twist on the project to differentiate themselves. So we put together a specification package that identified what we wanted without alienating any of the companies. I have copies of those for everybody. I was just trying to wait a little bit because that's, that's just one manufacturer's. Um, so we were pretty successful in that. Um, everybody was able to bid on it that wanted to. Um, one of the companies doesn't do a welded deck, so you can see they didn't respond to alternate number two. Um, that's why we put it as an alternate, because we didn't want to alienate them from the base bid. Um, so we want to make sure that we answer any questions or concerns that you have tonight. Um, we've talked to Robert and Chris Sawyer, and <coughs> don't need to take up any more of your time, but we are prepared to uh, offer a recommendation um, on an apparent low bidder if we, if we get to that point tonight. We typically do that with conditions because we still have questions. We just opened the bids on Friday, but we wanted to get before you tonight um, and tell you where we're at. Um, and so one of those conditions, for example, would be double checking with them about their schedule and making sure that they, are, that, that they satisfy our um, level of comfort with getting this delivered by, I believe, the apparent low bidder was September 2nd, which would be in time for the first home football game. So there are several things on our list already. Um, if you have things that I can't answer tonight that we add to that list, um, we can still hopefully um, award an apparent low bidder, and maybe, I don't know how your board works, but maybe you can give um, Robert or Steve the, or maybe Woody the authorization to formally award the contract if we don't do that tonight. You want to add about that? Okay. Um. Yeah. So I had a question, just um, actually two questions. One, that seems like an awfully short turnaround uh, to get the bids in once the, the um, request for bids has gone out. Yes. And um. are, we, are we sure that they had enough time to do a 
intensive and thorough bid? Yes. Um, in, in this case, it, yeah, it was a short term. Uh, typically, we give them three weeks. Um, but because of the research Robert's been doing for weeks, if not months, before we were involved, and then the fact that we had an opportunity to speak to all four of them before we actually formally put out the bid, they were all familiar with the project. They actually all gave us prices and plans because they're here, just use us, yeah. you know, giving us the sales pitch. Um, so they just cut two of the companies, in fact, just gave us the same plan that they'd already given us the price on, sharpened their pencil a little bit, price came down $20,000. Um, so we feel pretty good about that. My other question is, um, are we concerned at all that the only one we didn't, the one that's, I guess, ranked fourth, is the only one that offered refer uh, references? Well, we actually, um, so Friday we get, came out of this meeting, and that was one of Robert's major concerns. Um, so we got on the phone, we contacted ED Specialty, um, and we got references from them, and we got this plan from them. They're number one. Yeah, they're, right. So they were the first people that I focused on in the last 24 hours getting information from. And, and I just want to add that each bidder was unique and they all forgot something. <laughs> yeah, so we, there wasn't one that had a complete package. Everybody forgot something. Okay. Our contact had forwarded those references to the people putting the package together and for some reason it didn't get put in the mail to us. So we have since gotten, what, 14 pages of references? And one of the, that's another thing I didn't mention. We will definitely call at least three references, um, probably Windsor and South Burlington being the first two because they're in the state of Vermont to see how they did. Uh, Corey, could you just um, review how, based on the plans, uh, the <coughs> ability to add a press box at a yeah. later time? Right. So I didn't want to hand that out because I don't want to jump the guns. And so I'll pass out these plans, though. Um, this is from the what we would call the apparent low bidder, um, but but I'm not I'm not trying to force the issue. Consider it kind of a reference that we can look at and talk about. Okay. Is that what alternate one is? Is the press box? Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, alternate one is to add some really sharp purple to the. Yeah, the, the, the color is very important, and I, I highly recommend that you put the riser in that goes between the steps, the seating. It will, number one, give it a nice effect, it will have the home colors, and number two, with the way the sun reflects off the <coughs> aluminum, it will mute that reflecting into the players, so it has kind of a two-fold effect. It looks really nice aesthetically and functionally it cuts down glare. Mm -hmm. And yeah. are most of the games at night though? No? Well during the daytime there's a lot of teams that do play on the field during the later parts of the day after sometime graduation. Yeah. But, nice but people are sitting there, there's not gonna be any glare if they're, if they're completely full to some degree. Yeah, right? it, but, yeah. <laughs> it's not always full. <laughs> but it, it is a very nice touch of per per very small amount of money. It is kind of the industry standard. Most of these schools are adding color at this point. That's alternate one, is that? That was alternate one, yeah. What is alternate two? That's the alternate two was to, to actually have the aluminum deck welded. Um, there's kind of, there, there's several levels you can go to when you're building these grandstands and uh, we, we wanted to find out, you know, to, to kind of go the extra step what that would cost. Um, I've, I've talked to Robert. I think that, that he are on the same page. Our office certainly doesn't feel like the welded deck is necessary. We're getting a tongue and groove deck, which holds the deck together nicely. Um, and if you were trying to direct water somewhere, you would weld the deck to make sure the water doesn't drip through. But in this case, that's not necessary. So it's, it's metal and wood. Actually, this will be all um, steel aluminum. and aluminum. Okay. Tongue and groove? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> the seat's being aluminum. Um, it comes with a rounded edge seat, uh, so your legs don't fall asleep while you're sitting there for an hour or two. Um, I'm trying to think, it, uh, it will be fully uh, ADA compliant. Um, there are 10 handicap or wheelchair spots with 10, quote, companion seats um, laid out in this. Uh, it has stairs at one end, handicap ramp at the other. 
It will be elevated off the ground, similar to the, the one that was just taken down. I believe this is actually a little bit higher off the ground. Um, this is proposed to be four feet off the ground. I think that's a little bit higher than the, than the last one. So you, you're up there, you've got a, a nice view of the field or the track. Um, so to run through the numbers really quick, uh, well, I guess we just covered them. I've totaled them up in the right-hand column uh, with alternate one because if we that, that's the recommendation we're prepared to, uh, to submit. And to answer Woody's question, you can see on the grandstand how there is an a, a open space in the top middle of the first page, and that is the area that will be designed structurally to handle a future press box. And the way all these press boxes come from We've done more research than me, so you can speak to this, but they basically come prefab, like a modular home or something, on a truck. They take a crane, they lift it, they put it on that platform. They'll probably have to take out the flooring that's there um, and bolt the press box to the steel structure underneath. You plug the wires in, and away you go. If, for whatever reason, it were determined down the road that the press box would go somewhere else, uh, is, is that area then become available? Seating can be retrofitted for seating, or we'll put the band in that. I don't know that it, it will be flat, and all of these seats have a 12-inch rise to them. Yeah. So in that effect, it wouldn't have quite the same look. I imagine that if the press box doesn't happen this year or next, that um, the coaches will still be there. It's it's eight feet deep. You could put up these tables could go up there, or some sort of tables could go up there for scorekeepers or coaches, so the space can definitely be utilized. So it will initially have some sort of guardrail around it? I don't or believe so. Okay. No, no. Um, I think it's just, a, it, you know, it steps up 12 inches from the last bleacher, or the yeah. last seat, and then it'll just be a flat platform. That's something we could talk to them about if you feel like oh, a okay. guardrail is necessary. It. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be it's like six same, or eight feet up in the yeah, ground. The same step oh. up from the... Yeah. You yeah. look at this second page, which yeah, that's they just throw that in there again. They want to sell us a press box too, so the second page shows how a press box would look. Yeah. <laughs> just for sake of argument, is there any question about what what's, what are they charging for a press box to plug into this? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll just speak to that one. And, and that's all over the place. Okay. I have found a manufacturer, and they are offering a press box, but their press box is overpriced for what you get. I found American press box with just slightly under forty thousand dollars plug and play. That's the latest, and that's the latest. Mm -hmm. the, it's got the finished inside. All the electrics done. It's wired. It's got the roof hatch inside. It's got all the safety railings above on the crow's nest. It's just a really nice, nice press box. Corey. Um, Whatever this number is, then there must there's a contingency number on top of that that we yes. need to keep yeah. in mind. Is that correct? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. So our recommendation would be that you keep a minimum 10% as a construction contingency. We've already found one surprise. We know it's going to be a little bit extra money. Um, so in round numbers, that's a $20,000 contingency um, in case <coughs> there are more surprises down the road. Uh, we found some old concrete that's buried underground there. And we don't know how many of them we're going to have to remove. But once we have the layout of where the footings are going for this new grandstand, uh, my understanding is that uh, the facilities department will dig them up with an excavator. But of course, that renting, it's, a, it's not the mini excavator. This is a big excavator that will have to be rented for several hundred dollars a day. Um, and then there's our contract. You know, yeah, that might yeah. be just a slightly a bit, but we can handle it. OK, but, but you know, there's thousands of dollars already that we know we're going to have to spend on that. So the new orientation for the new bleachers will be facing south, is that right? Yes. yes. And uh, as, uh, have you talked to them about kind of how the, the parking area is now going to be functioning more as a public space? Um, it's, it's, we've got quite a nice layout. Um, but these bleachers are going to extend a little bit beyond, deeper than where the old bleachers are, so that parking has gone away. And there's a, a gate that's uh, not there yet, right? Not there. Um, but there will be a fence there. And so all the spectators will be on the same side of the field as the Colonel's Den. 
and there's an opportunity to set up some picnic tables because that will be gated and no longer have any vehicles in it so that behind the bleachers can be a lot more friendly to the spectators that are at these events. Yeah, what, we, what we've done is it's not just, we had to rethink, re-engineer how the space is used. There's 28 spaces back there and went around and looked, where can we find 28 spaces? Well, we found a lot more than 28 spaces that were vacant just across the street. So we really weren't losing any parking. And we were gaining a very nice family area. Once the bleachers go in, which extend almost halfway into the parking lot, it wasn't safe anymore to bring vehicles down there with all the people walking through there. Now you have vehicle traffic and it just was so problematic. It was like, let's just gate it off and create a family place where the children can run around. You don't have to worry about somebody bumping into them with a vehicle or that traffic going by there. And then this is where people go to the Colonel's Den. So we're envisioning what's the Colonel's Den look like now in FFA. They're going to have a lot more business. So the revenues are going to increase because now they're not isolated. All the stuff that was going on next door behind the grandstands, the chaos, and around the back of the track, and that's going to, I don't want to say it be eliminated, but it will certainly be reduced because uh, it will all be on the one side. And it will have an atmosphere of something really family friendly atmosphere and we plan on putting picnic tables which you've already started. We're going to develop the back of the Colonel's Den as a dining area. We have a light pole from another project left over that we brought out back that we're going to repurpose out there to light the back up. So it's going to look really nice when it's done. I hope people will enjoy it. And um, kind of glazed over the seating capacity, the the seats are proposed at just shy of a thousand seats. And while there's no formal count on the amount of seats that currently exist between the two bleachers, it's thought that with the band capacity, um, it's right <coughs> around a thousand. In terms of um, fencing off the parking lot area, on times where there's not any games, is that area you use for bringing equipment down or supplies down to the den or to yes, you know, the track will be <coughs> place back there? There now. will be a gate there to let vehicle traffic doing deliveries to get into the baseball field. Because I have my guys, my groundskeepers are back there. Okay. So the hidden so bench is going to be behind the den and not... So yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be around the, the, exactly there. around the den area, not up close to where the bleachers are. That'll just be an open space. Or, um, or Robert, the space underneath the bleachers, that will be probably more open than the current grandstands, is that correct? So there theoretically will be at least as much, if not more, space for storage. I mean, we, we're gonna need places to store equipment, I would assume, like we have under the current uh, south stands. We don't know exactly what the detailing of that is. I asked that question today and the manufacturer didn't get a response. We went back and forth three or four times today. But if you flip to the second page, you can certainly see that there's a cantilevered portion of the bleachers that seems to indicate there's quite a bit of openness. Um, there is some amount of cross bracing that I believe isn't shown in this drawing. This is just a conceptual drawing. So. Um, the exact extent of that varies from manufacturer to manufacturer, and I don't know exactly what that is. They're showing the handicap ramp, in fact, coming down along the side of the bleachers and then turning a corner and coming underneath the cantilevered piece. So we know there's plenty of headroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So you would anticipate more detailed uh, drawings? Yep. yep, the process would be. Um, as soon as they get an award um, or sign contract, <coughs> then they will produce what they call shop drawings, but detailed drawings, give them to us to sign off on, and uh, Robert and I, and um, however your board wants to operate, can have an opportunity to review those. They will also uh, be submitted for a building permit. The contractor is responsible for getting the building permit from the state of Vermont, and once 
those shop drawings are approved by all parties, only then will they start building the pictures. But they do all the foundation work. That's right. Yeah, one of the nice things about this particular company that was the uh, ED specialty, they don't sub out the concrete. So from my standpoint, I'm only making one phone call if I have a concern. They have a date that they require to be started by when they're when they're agreeing to finish by September second. Are they? Yeah, um, I, they put it pretty generically in the in their bid uh, the end of June when they <coughs> get started. I pushed them on the phone today about that because um, I you know I said what if the building inspector comes back and you know requires a change on these plans? Does that affect the schedule? And he assured me that there was enough flexibility in the schedule for them to produce the shop drawings, us to have two weeks to review them, get them back, make any changes that are needed, and still fabricate, deliver, and install the bleachers by September 2nd. And are permits going to be able to draw, be drawn before? Have permits already been drawn for this? Uh, there, there's not a zoning permit required. No. Um, I checked on that. And the only permit that is needed is from the state of Vermont, uh, Division of Fire Safety. It's a building permit. And um, I brought Brian out here already. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, he's all already aware. He's already project. walked the site. Okay. He's already yeah. said, okay, yeah. I know what you're doing. Just right. miss, file the necessary paperwork. We'll take right. care of it. Um, some of the contractors didn't uh, commit to finishing the project until uh, end of September. So um, there was differences. I did talk it through with them today and <coughs> feel comfortable with that. I mean, something can always happen. You know, if, if they get held up for four weeks, that because of us or because of the building permit, that would be different. But I, I don't anticipate that. Tony, Robert, because time is of the essence here, is is um, is there any penalty clause for late performance? No, and we typically don't do that. I've talked that through with Jim Kane on several projects, mm -hmm. and we just don't recommend liquidated damages because it never ends well. Yeah, or, or just a per day type of. I'm sorry. Okay, for, per day. Like right, I'm sorry, that, we call that liquidated damages, a penalty on a daily basis if they're late. We did not do that, no. Is there any difference on warranties or guarantees or anything like that on the products? Uh, the industry standard is a one-year warranty. Um, that is a good question on what <coughs> this particular manufacturer has. I, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know what the difference would be on those. And also on that storage question, I don't know how critical the the storage because I don't know what stored they are. I mean if that's you know if one of them has a big space and one of them doesn't and we'd have to build another storage shed, you know, whether whether you know six thousand or ten thousand dollars makes a difference on that. Uh, it's not that know. big a space oh, now no. so I would yeah. no, it's under the existing storage 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 storage. Storage. right it's pretty it's pretty narrow. It wants to get to about this wide and, and, and just the hang in. Yeah. And it, it's actually fit in between the girders right now. So is I that think fenced off or something? So it's not, but there's there. there's um, latching wooden doors that cover it. So that's like an after build. It is right, yeah. right. Well, yeah. My question was just to make sure that it wasn't the whole back end wasn't yeah. going to be blocked off, so that there wouldn't be any access. I just want to say that the storage under the grandstand, well, it sounds like a great idea, is not that great an idea. It's we've had a lot of problems with that, especially with animals, skunks, which make it very unpleasant to sit in the bleachers. <laughs> um, so the more the, the more you keep it open, uh, you have less problems. There's, there's ways to store things. We talked about that, about storage. And it, it just, I, 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 my conversations with Chris, it wasn't a high priority okay. for him. Well, you guys have reviewed it and yeah. comfortable with it. It wouldn't be weather time. No, it wouldn't be because they'd be dripping down when you're <coughs> It's like storing wood under a deck. It doesn't work. Who? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. That we accept the bid of E and D specialty for um, building bleachers at the UHS with alternate number one. The amount of two hundred thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars. The only issue to that motion is that it isn't warned on here for tonight's meeting, and it is it is a big a 
big number. Um, in the interest of time, uh, what I was would suggest is that you consider authorizing the Finance Committee to um, meet, which we will be Wednesday, and make the decision at that point, taking into account all the input that we've received from everyone. Because we really, it, it isn't, it, wa it wasn't time to get it on here as a, as a warn. Okay, you know, I thought so. that was the point of this, <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> Well, to it, you are making a motion that we vote on it right now as a group. Is that correct? And, and well, then I can withdraw that motion and move that we authorize the, fair, the finance committee to award a bid on the grandstand question at our meeting on May 23rd. Second. Sean, second. Any discussion on that? How much money is allotted for this? Two hundred and fifty thousand. So if you're going to go with two hundred, why don't you throw in a press box? Well, that's the well, that's why I asked about the contingency. Yeah, we got a twenty thousand contingency. Yeah, yeah, it might yeah. be cheaper now. Though. Yeah, it, it might be. Have the equipment coming in to do this? Because it is. It's a. Uh, it, it is one of those things like the popcorn popper. You just set it down on there, but. Um, if we, do we have to have a crane for the construction of the bleachers? Yeah. If we have a crane for the construction of the bleachers anyway, do we have, would you want to rent the cranes a second time if it's already? There's a couple things about the press box. Um, first of all, uh, it would be good to negotiate with the contractor that's doing the work to see if they could lower their number. Their number was twice that. Almost right. Um, it was almost seventy, um, but it, it's worth you know negotiating with them, uh, particularly if, if they have the job or you know they're the pending bidder. Um, but if the number is around forty thousand dollars, I wouldn't recommend that you authorize that now because that leaves you so little contingency uh, that that I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. I don't think there's a huge premium on putting the press box in later this year or next year. Um, it, it might be a crane rental, which is $1,000 a day. Um, but like Robert said, there's still some infrastructure that needs to be brought in there. That's gonna cost some money. Um, there's these concrete footings that need to be pulled out. And then there's, there's just always something, you know? This is the opportunity to question or make comments. Well, there's a motion on the floor. We have a motion on the floor, so having a vote in the middle of a motion, probably. But by all means, speak. You know, give us your input. Well, Ruth said something about withdrawing her motion, so she wants to do that. No, but she made it. I withdrew one motion and made another one. Okay. You do have a motion on the floor. To uh, authorize the finance committee to, uh, to make the call at their uh, at our meeting on Wednesday. I mean, I think it's good. I mean, you, you'll get a bit more information between now and and uh, Wednesday. I'll, the, yep, I'll continue to gather information. You know, I, and you, typically I'd say this kind of thing takes a week to, to get all my questions answered. Sure. Um, but we'll see what we can do before we'll Wednesday. Little, little the warranty yeah. question is a good one, Russ. And uh, and you know if we do if we could award something by the end of the week that's in the schedule I've worked out for this project that would keep us on schedule so Wednesday is even better. Yeah, no, I'm I'm supportive of it. And I trust the finance committee to be the right thing. Thank you, Russ. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Yes. Yes. yes, it has. Okay, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous.
Okay. Thank you both for your presentation. I right, just want to I just want to make sure that I properly thank Mr. Kaufman that he because he pulled his equipment off of his jobs that they needed to help us out. I just want to make sure that um, that is recognized because Mr. Kaufman had not done what he did for us. We couldn't have done it. <laughs> I want my own seat there. Yeah. 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 This is a press box. Yeah. Yeah. This is a team the whole, we have the whole here. They work together. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else for the BOHS administration? I guess that was it. Well, I'm just going to grab this one. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Does anybody want more copy? No, you can keep both. Does anybody need their own copy of the yeah. color share? Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, Mr. Perrin, anything else before I move this to the counselor? Can I have that? Okay. Bob, you got you're keeping your can you sample for finance committee, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. I'm colorblind, Ruth. You're going to have to help me. Oh, well. I'll keep mine then. Okay. <laughs> where do you want? Where do you want? <laughs> Colonel Purple. Okay. How about student council? What's the news? Um. Well, we recently um we've uh we've kind of been finishing up the electronics policy, talking about that. Um, I believe. Ms. Lab, our advisor, submitted a list of all the council members' available hours during the school day to Mr. Perrin. Uh, those are hours in which we would be uh, able to, it's such as when we have like a study hall or something like that, um, in which we'd be able to leave that <coughs> class and uh, attend a uh, disciplinary meeting about, or I don't know what to call it, but. It's a restorative. A restorative discussion. A restorative discussion about uh, uh, misuse of electronics. <coughs> um, so that should be going into place Hopefully by the soon. End of, by the end of this week or early next week. Okay. Um, I'm sure uh, we'll make an announcement to it about the school. Um, and. We, uh, we've been talking about restructuring student council and we've pretty much come up with a plan that because this year the way it's been is we have a meeting once a week but we've had minimal attendance and we have so we haven't been able to get too much done um, so next year we tomorrow we're voting for a core group who will be the base of student council um, and then next year at the beginning of next year people will submit um, applications in the form of a paragraph or two about themselves to be a part of the uh, to represent their class in student council and the core group will meet every day in advisory and then with the rest of the council once every two weeks. Ideally, the core group will represent each grade level. I don't think colors will impact it. Um. Um, yeah, um, I don't know if we will have any freshmen in the core group because traditionally, um, like we we have officers now who have an advisory, so it's it's a similar concept. Um, and we traditionally don't have freshman officers because we vote uh, for officers from the current uh, council at the end of the year. Um, so I don't believe we've ever had a freshman just because of their eighth graders when they uh, when we vote on uh, the core group. Um, we're voting on it tomorrow, so I don't think that that's going to be. But they will be represented by the larger group. Um, just a potential suggestion for the future is that. There's a student council at BAMS is 
to have them maybe elect somebody to be there. Because I imagine stuff happens when the court group meets or when the officers meet. And mm -hmm. just, just be good to get them there. Of course, one freshman in that an advisory of all you older folks, that might be a little intimidating. But maybe, but, but not for this, not for this yeah. community. Well, for, well, for this year, we have, we have an asset count. Every middle school has an asset council, and it's a group of students that have been trained to, to be school leaders. And so I haven't talked to Ethan about it because this is the first I heard about it. But um, I, well, I guess what I'm going to suggest to student council is that we look at members that are on that asset council right now in eighth grade, especially from our outlying schools, and see if we can draw them in. And, and maybe among that body of students, they can select representatives that we would bring to student council. Because so, they're already proven leaders in their eighth grade class right now. But we'll have to talk more about that. Anything else? Uh, I believe that is all of our okay. things. Thank you. Uh, move on to bands. Jerry? Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just uh, pass a, a little bit about our summer learning. Um, and while that's coming around, I'll also update you <coughs> on um, we are, we've kind of held off on our 1% proposals. A little bit while we're trying to um, work with our action plan committee, um, we had Wendy Cohen, who is the guru of uh, uh, professional learning communities, uh, come in on Friday morning and work with our action plan committee uh, to <clears throat> try to come up with um, a direction, or to help us um, uh, come up with direction uh, to narrow down our focus around um, our learning and our, our goals that we want to accomplish. Um, in the next few years, um, but specifically for, for next year. And so we, we did that, and we have decided our priorities are really around curriculum mapping um, and creating interim assessments. Uh, and so with that focus, uh, I'll be presenting that tomorrow morning at our uh, weekly faculty meeting. And then based on that, our one, we'll be offering 1% proposal um, to come in. Those will be due, uh, I believe, May 31st, and then we will share those um, at the June BAMS committee meeting of, of those proposals. So all those proposals will um, have to be tied and linked into the work around curriculum mapping, uh, writing interim assessments, and uh, tier levels of support and interventions for all students at BAMS, as well as that will be the work that we'll be continuing to do through our in-service days next year. Uh, the Summer camp that you have in front of us, you'll see that we have seven full weeks of programming coming up at BAM, so it'll be a very busy summer uh, for rising seventh graders. So these are current sixth graders coming to BAMS, as well as our current seventh graders who are going to be rising eighth graders. On occasion, we even have some current eighth graders um, that will participate in some of the summer learning that just to kind of keep their skills um, sharp for going into um, going into high school. Uh, there's four weeks of summer learning with a uh, focus on uh, kind of re remedial and in, um, literacy and math skills, <coughs> and then as well as a lot of enrichment from our, our beams. Suzanne Grenoble, who's our foreign language um, teacher, is our <coughs> summer learning coordinator, and Betsy Stacy, our beams uh, director, is also um, working on that. So it's a real consolidated effort. It's all free. Um, can't get better summer programming than that. Um, so we'd be very busy. And we feed them very, you know, we feed them breakfast, feed them lunch. Um, I think, um, David, you're involved with helping to, the career center is going to be involved with helping to feed the students this summer, yes. I think. Um, we also um, are focused on uh, literacy. <coughs> In our school, we have um, presented keys to vocabulary. Uh, tomorrow she'll be back again. She was here last week. This will be her third visit to uh, BAMS. Her first visit was a whole school training on um, using this program called Keys to Vocabulary. Uh, last week she then broke up and worked with individual teams and then tomorrow she's working with um, the eighth grade teams um, again. Last, seventh, last week was seventh grade and then um, tomorrow will be the eighth grade teams. Uh, and then for myself, um, 
Last Thursday and Friday, I went down to Connecticut with um, Terry Brooks. We went to um, the first um, of many of the New England Regional PBIS, which stands for Pub uh, Positive Behavioral Intervention Supports. Um, it's, a, um, it's a regional network conference, and our network goes all from uh, Maryland, Delaware, all the way up uh, to Maine. Um, and some of the work that we've been doing at BAMS around our, our vision <coughs> statement, which is our learning for life, caring for others, doing the right thing, all those expectations that come under that, our BAMS books, um, that's all PBIS kind of um, focus. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, um, but it gave me the opportunity to um, work with Terry, um, who is kind of our district coordinator on PBIS, and to learn a lot of what's going on in other schools, not only in our state, but around a, a vast uh, area. So I think, I think that's what I have. Thank you. Terry, can I ask a question? Of course you can. Did you do this last year, this camp? Uh, yes, I did. <coughs> How did it turn out for you guys? Oh, it was fantastic. Um, we even had students that weren't signed up originally and two um, students showed up on a Monday morning who had been at a uh, friend's house for a sleepover and she said, oh, I'm going to VAMS, you know, for, for summer camp. And they're like, what, are you crazy? And, and they said, no, no, it's really fun or whatever. And so um, she came and so we had full house. We okay. had- Did you put it in the newspaper at all? Or? I think it gets published pretty- I was gonna suggest yeah. that, but it's a full house. Or? Actually, um, when I was talking to Betsy Stacy this evening, um, she said that they normally they make start making phone calls. They get a whole list and they start making all these phone calls. And they're filling. They're not by any means filled, um, but they're about half the um, half filled up. Some of them that are. I think the Fire and Stone is very popular. One of our um, real popular after school activities. Uh, and because it's um, it's like an adventure camp. Camp, I think they only have 14, and I think they have 14 with some students on the waiting list already for that. Um, and so they haven't even started making phone calls yet. So the word is out. It's a very um, successful program. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's great for the seventh graders because when they come to us in the fall, they've already, they feel like BAMS is home to them already. They know where lockers are. They know where the bathrooms are. They 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 just you know feel like they've got, uh, a head start on some of the other kids not ever being in there. They're not afraid of us, which is nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Dave? Uh, yes, a fairly short report, just a reminder that on June 6th at 430 is the Wyndham Regional Career Center uh, <coughs> Senior Recognition Night. It'll be held in the band multi-purpose room. And you sh if you haven't got your invites, you should be getting them soon. That's it? That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ron, I didn't mean to cut you off before and gave my little speech, and then nope. I didn't give you a chance to <laughs> get anything else from Central oh, I, I figured you'd let me do it under this time frame. Uh, I really only have the food service agreement that's later on in the menu. So. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just have a, a couple of items. Uh, one is that uh, I did uh, attend by, by way of webinar a uh, board chair uh, webinar, uh, a seminar actually, for um, put on by the State School Board Association for board chairs. And I, it was my first time doing a webinar thing. Uh, actually, it, were, it was their first time too, actually. But it worked out pretty well. Uh, there was opportunities. You were able to hit buttons and send in questions and comments and, and vote and answer questions. And uh, I found it helpful. Hopefully, it will. Uh, help me uh, progress a little bit in this capacity. Uh, definitely a good, uh, a good program put on by the BSBA. Uh, putting on my, one of my other hats just very briefly, uh, I'm very pleased to uh, announce that we have 13 BOHS students attending the Governor's Institute this summer. Uh, that is uh, I think there's only three schools in the state that have more people participating in the Governor's Institute. We have, I believe, seven going to current issues and youth activism. We have um, three going to arts, two to engineering, and one to math. And uh, 
think that's a that's a great great showing and, and part of the reason that we do so well is that we do uh, provide a little bit of help uh, for the for these students to go to this and uh, it definitely makes a difference and, uh, it's a fabulous experience and uh, I think uh, these young folks will really get something out of it so that's great to see 13 from BUHS okay uh, that's all I have uh, we'll move on to unfinished business and we have some policy reviews the second reading is there somebody reporting for Ian well, they're listed here. Uh, I'll just run through them. Uh, D1, personal recruitment, selection, appointment, and background checks. That's the second reading. Uh, policy D3, staffing and job descriptions, second reading. F1, student conduct and discipline, second reading. F2, bus discipline, second reading. And G16, class size policy, second reading. So this is the second bite at the apple, if you will, on any of these, if there's any questions or concerns. Uh, Lori? On my hard copy, the policy, perhaps that this is because it's a policy guideline, there's no number. Is that? Policy. Okay, so class size policy is current G16, yeah. and then within that, there's policy guidelines? Yeah, is um, what it represents <coughs> is um, the state guidelines. So that doesn't have a separate number, like a procedure no, one. No, okay. it's just um, we we attach this just because it's a state. Uh, it's part of the statute that they passed. So do you, do you like the chart you're referring to? I did like the chart. No, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For example, the chart. <laughs> But you're referring to the chart that's not numbered? Well, it's the whole supervisory union-wide class size policy guideline. Yeah. So, and then the, the table is the, the chart of the third page. I think I was, I was thrown off by the policy guideline just <coughs> yeah. added to the end of our policy. So those last three pages are part of the state um, examples. Do you want to have any reference? Guidelines and in the policy. Okay. I mean, this is a class size guideline <coughs> will be used. I mean, in the introductory paragraph, it's G16. So I suppose these are the guidelines that will be used, or are there separate guidelines that? policies because the dates would shift, I, I assume, um, same policy, the G16 class size policy implementation number five, there's a date, a deadline of January 15th, 2011, is, is that a one-time thing or is that yeah. annual? No, that, that, was, uh, that was part of the statute okay. that we needed to that by a certain date. Okay. So what they were doing is asking every supervisory union in this district through the supervisory union to provide the numbers that then they could use as their guidelines. So that's a one-time one time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Contribute to the 
providing a safe learning environment for students. Qualifications would be a good teacher be included within a safe. I mean, safe would be just somebody really big and strong that would keep them safe. Would they be a good teacher? Learning. I mean, I don't know. Learning. 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 Well, I think this relates to the background. The background check. Right. I don't know. Just sort of jump right off. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Chairman? Yes. I don't believe you can have more than one primary. So it should be the primary, not a primary. But you can only have one primary. I think we question that. Yeah. <laughs> Is, uh, who's representing policy committee tonight? Anybody who's on it? I'm on the committee. Uh, we didn't discuss this particular <laughs> sentence. But a bird, well, a, a bird has many primary feathers. <laughs> Ah. There you go. <laughs> there are four primary colors. There are four, four primary colors. colors. And if you do say the primary, it's somewhat exclusive. It, it rules out all the other yeah. possible safety. Primary considerations, <laughs> not all other considerations. Well, if we remand this, it is going to come back yet again for both next time around. It's, uh, I think all we have to do is get a definitive definition of primary. And I would just tell you that this is kind of the state Vermont School Board Association um, suggested language. So um, there's people combing through this word selection. What do you mean by the? What is that? <laughs> 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 third and final uh, shot to, to vote on it. And if we the policy it. committee in the yeah. meantime would like to investigate. We're, we're going to be meeting, it looks like, at 5.30 before the next meeting. So okay. we can, uh, if I remember, <laughs> I'll bring my little notes. Those that are in favor of A should show up and defend your position, and those that are in favor <laughs> of B uh, should show up and defend your position. Democratically sorted out. We get some eighth graders. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else for unfinished business? If not, we'll move on to new business, and we have a couple of items there. One is uh, food service agreement. Yeah. And that's, you're going to cover that, Ron? Huh? Yeah, so this is, uh, Jim <coughs> put this together. This is the third year uh, for the 2012 13. Food service agreement with Cafe Services. Um, I'm not sure if finance has, has reviewed that yet. No. But it's, it's basically a con continuation yeah. of that contract <coughs> for the third year. Um, it requires signatures by, by the board chair. By the board chair. Okay. So basically, we are in the, as Ron said, in the third year of a three year contract with Cafe Services, and it just uh, changes the numbers um, slightly, uh, so we need to we need to sign it in order to enact the third year. So, so I guess there should be a motion to authorize the chair to sign the contract. Go ahead. Okay. Ricky got, Ricky got there <laughs> first this time. I, I move that we authorize the board chair to sign the uh, food service agreement with Cassidy Services for the third year. Second. Second. Okay. <coughs> Any discussion? What was the, was there a cost inflator or two? Uh, let's see. Projected cost for 2012-13 is up 1%. Income is up half a percent. And the net return is uh, down slightly. 2012-13 uh, net cost a return to the district is $2,242, so it's, it's pretty small numbers changing. Meal, meal prices will not increase. And 
I will, I promise I'll uh, read through it just to refresh myself. You can check those seeds. It, it, was, it was three years ago when we sat down with all these folks, or two years, three years ago. So. And they're not in breach in contract. There's no recommendation to try to renegotiate. No. no. Do it. And there, there, are, there are stipulations that either side can terminate. No, 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 this, this is just one, one year. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is the third year, so we will, uh, sometime in the course, probably in four or five months, we'll start the process again and um, solicit interested parties to come and do their dog and pony show at the uh, Finance Committee, usually, and, uh, for the next go around. Is this the same as the Abbey Group, or is this, no, this, this is, is a different group? Uh, the, the last time, uh, the three that we, at least that made the finals, were um, Cafe Services, the Abbey Group, and Fitzco, I believe. Uh, is that correct? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, and we selected Cafe Services at that time. Okay. So, we didn't vote. Okay. We have a motion to second. Is, uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. I will study it and act accordingly. Uh, we have a uh, employee resignation, I believe, of BAMS. Uh, yes. Um, I'd like to ask the, uh, the board to accept Andrew Candler's resignation as uh, our middle school physical education instructor. He uh, submitted this, oh, I believe this letter says May, where's that letter, did you have that letter? <laughs> Last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Um, he's having surgery and his family will be relocating to Texas for his reasons for the relief. Okay. For the resignation, sorry. Effect, it, it was effective uh, immediately on May 14th. Questions or comments? Uh, is there a motion to accept? I move we accept Andrew Kindler's resignation with Rebecca. Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be fast in this group. Okay. Been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Abstentions? All right. We have accepted the resignation of Andrew Kindler. Can I ask a question? I probably should have done this before, but um, do we have a replacement that will be acting in this state? I'm ready for a new business. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, with that above resignation, um, I would uh, be asked the board uh, to approve Robert Deschard, uh, who uh, currently is employed by BAMS as our safety officer. However, he is a certified um, health and phys ed um, teacher. Um, and uh, for him to be considered by the board as a long-term sub for the rest <coughs> of the school year. And then we would also uh, like to recommend, uh, Ingrid Crisco and myself, recommend him to a one-year interim um, position as the BAMS physical education instructor. Again, like I said, he does have a bachelor's degree from Plymouth State <coughs> University, <coughs> certified in both health and physical education, has been very active in our community since um, coming here in, in um, late last August. Um, currently also holds a position of sports and fitness co coordinator at the Boys and Girls Club, has um, assisted in coaching and officiating at uh, many of our sports teams. Um, we're very happy to have him, and we're happy that he can he's willing to stay on, if you accept. Did you get that name, James? Uh, Robert um, Dichard, D-I-C-H-A-R-D. Can we keep going, or yeah. I w I'd rather wait and, yeah, yeah. and ask if there could <laughs> be the nomination for uh, Rob Deschard for um, that position. A motion? I don't know that we accept that. <laughs> We're giving you a chance? <laughs> I don't know how to word it. I, I never, I just get a second. It's because there was less pressure. <laughs> What she said. I, what she, can I just do yeah, as, you can do as that. a statement? Jane will <laughs> <laughs> recreate that. Uh, I like seconding. Okay, and 
I'll second what she, what she said. That she did. <laughs> Can I say this point? In terms okay. of the, the one year appointment, I mean, is there any um, reason to look outside at all to see if there are other people? Or, or well, is um, there... the job was posted, um, the one year interim, because of the late resignation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, uh, you don't always get um, as. We wanted to be able to have a, a larger bank to, to, to pull from next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did post the position internally. Um, um, and then, um, so that's did the it reason go for outside, the- Or is that, did, once, it, if once it's posted inside, there's a qualified because person? Because we asked for a one year interim and we had a qualified person. So that's the- <laughs> I think there were some other circumstances that we could go, I could go into the second session if you okay. would like. And before we vote, we're still in the discussion phase, so before we vote, I would like to know that the void in the safety officers, there's a contingency coming from that. We currently have someone um, uh, subbing in that position right now, of course. Mm -hmm. If this, uh, um, if Rob uh, was uh, nominated for this position, that would be um, a position that would uh, we would be putting out um, uh, advertising. advertising, thank you. Um, so that, that would be a new hire that we'd have to start right away. And actually I think we have, actually I think we have advertised as a potential um, opening for a safety officer already, so we have, um, now that I'm thinking about it, I think we're already um, receiving some applications for that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to appoint Robert Richard as um, interim. Is that title? One year interim physical education. Is that teacher one year interim? Okay. At BAM, yes. <laughs> if I could just, I mean, because there's the something. The ensuing year. If I could just because there's something you know, I, what else do I have in mind that might be good for next year? But. So I, but, but if that's the perceived, but it's outside. So if that's, if that's, um, if, 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 if this is fine, then, then I'm going to go with it. That uh, option good. had been considered by the administration, and there were circumstances that led the administration to want to tie up this guy. For the next year? Yes. Next year. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extension. It's unanimous. Okay. And is there anything else? I have I have one more. Okay. You're higher. You're on a roll here. <laughs> We've been busy. <laughs> um, I at last um, board meeting um, you accepted the resignation of Ben Lord, uh, who is currently uh, teaching science um, at BAMS, and so that left um, an opening. Um, so I would also like to present to you uh, um, Jennifer Magoon, M-A-G-O-O-N, for um, a one-year science teaching position to fill the position left by Ben. Um, uh, Jennifer is a recent graduate, in fact just yesterday, from the uh, University of Vermont. Uh, she has certification in science as well as language arts. Uh, she completed her student teaching at Edmonds Middle School in Burlington. Uh, she was also a varsity athlete at UVM and comes to BAMS with lots of energy and enthusiasm. Uh, this position received approximately 30 applicants, a committee of six narrowed down the field to seven in which we interviewed, requesting three uh, individuals to come back to teach. Two of them accepted our offer to come back to teach and Jennifer was one of them. Um, the commi uh, committee is unanimous in making this recommendation to the board. Um, uh, the administration uh, would like to ask the board, however, um, not necessarily however, but to um, nominate for a one-year science position um, as opposed to an ongoing. Is there a motion? Oops. Mr. Chairman, I move that Jennifer Magoon be appointed as a one-year science teacher in the BAMS department. Second. Second by Sean. Okay. Discussion? Yes. 
discussion or questions, further questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, it's passed unanimously. What sport? Uh, she's a runner, so she did uh, cross country, indoor, and outdoor track. Uh -huh. Okay. Any more? Uh, no, but next meeting we'll probably have. <laughs> um, hopefully we'll, we uh, are going to be interviewing for our classroom um, paraeducator as well as our safety officer. All right. So it seems to me that there is a recommendation on the other position. Uh, it's a BUHS. Uh, there is. Special ed there is. BUHS number six. Um, We'd like to recommend that Alicia, I can't say her last name. Brandon, Brandon thank you. Sometimes confused with Brandon. Thank you. Brandon. Um, Alicia Brandon, um, was, we had five applicants for the position. We interviewed three of them, and they went through a pretty rigorous process of learning <coughs> by, um, after meeting with Ingrid and I, um, it got easier. Uh, they also met with uh, several teachers and paraprofessionals in the special ed department. And we would like to recommend that Alicia Brandon be appointed as the 712 special ed coordinator for UHS number six. Starting July. Sorry. Starting July 1st, ah. yes. And that's the position vacated by Mary McLaughlin's retirement. Ah, yes. Okay. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Wait, she said first. I move that we adopt the recommendation proposed by Mr. Perrin for the hiring of Alicia Brandon as a special ed. That's a 7 through 12 special ed. Oh, 7 through 12. Yes. 7, 7 through 12. 7 through 12. Oh, for BUA, just number 6. Mm -hmm. okay. And is there a second? Give it to Mel. She's just waiting to do that easy second that she would have to explain. I just do have one comment. I was very disappointed that no board member was asked to be on the search committee for this position. administrators, but also the special ed coordinators throughout the district of UHS 6 and some district-wide as well. So, and I, I think we recognize that into the second round that that should happen initially. Thank you. So, point well taken. Thanks. Okay. Now we need to vote we on We need to vote on that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Red? Abstentions? None? Do we still remember the name? Who can recite the name? Alicia Brandon. Alicia Brandon. Alicia. 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 It's Marisa. Alicia. Miss Brandon. Yes. Anybody else you want to point to Doctor? No, it's late hour. Okay. Is there anything else for the good of the order? 